Well, it's been some time since I made a video. I'm uh, going to move on to my radio series and talk a little bit about meters. Meters are a very, very integral part of your radio setup. You have to have a meter. It's really not an option. You have to have a good quality meter to check your SWRs whenever you set up your radio system. If nothing else, you have to have a meter to set up and check your standing wave ratio. Okay, um, There are many, many different brands, types, and price ranges of meters on the market. Kind of like guns. Okay, Meters are a lot like guns when it comes to people arguing, bickering back and forth as to which one is the best. Now there are um, varying qualities. There are some that are you know, of, of higher quality than others, just like in firearms. Now, whenever you start getting into accuracy, well, which one is the most accurate whenever you're reading power or wattage output out of your radio? This is when it becomes very, very murky. Okay? People will argue all day long about meters and which ones are pieces of junk and which ones are good. Blah, 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 blah. Measuring power out of a transmitter is a very, very definite science. In order to get an absolute true reading, you have to be like a electronics engineer or something. Because, I mean, it comes down to measuring, you know, ohm resistance and sine waves, or I don't even know if it's sine waves, but it can get very, very intricate. The biggest thing that you want to do is get yourself a quality meter. You do not have to spend a thousand dollars to get a quality meter. Okay, I personally have run dozies like the big one on the right for years. People say all the time, dozy meters are pieces of crap. They do not read wattage right. The meters on them are tight or do not show high enough wattages in their opinion. Um, I just got done going through a fiasco. I purchased a new radio. Um, the company said that out of the box the radio was to do 70 watts swing. You know, you can dead key 2 or 3 watts, 4 watts, whatever, and the thing would swing to 70 watts out of the box. Well, I get it and hook it all up and everything. Well, on my dozy meters, the absolute best I was seeing was 33, 34 watts, even with the power turned wide open. So I was like, huh, there must be something wrong with this, you know. So I called the company, tell them what I'm seeing. They're like, that doesn't sound right. Send it back. Send it back to them. They check it out. They say, well, everything looked good to them. You know, I said, well, why am I only seeing 45 watts or what have you? And, and, no, I'm sorry, 35 watts. And they said, well, you know, dozy meters are not known for really showing good peak power. Now you get into units of measure. Okay, you got me me meters that measure in RMS, or average power. You got them that measure in RMS peak power, or average peak power. And I say that because I've read that a lot of people say that dozy meters don't read in PEP, or peak envelope power, and they don't read in true peak power. They read in average peak power. Okay? So my meter, you know, the, the company is telling me that, oh, your meter, you know, dozies don't read high because they're not reading actual true peak power. Because that's what the company claimed. They said the thing would do 70 watts true peak power out of the box. So I'm like, huh? Okay, you know, if you say so, whatever. So uh, they had told me, they had written down on the paperwork they sent back, a meter that they used to check the power output. Well, I've been stewing over this for a few weeks, and I finally decided to purchase the meter that they were using, which was this one right here. That is a Palstar PM2000A watt meter. Okay, it reads in watts. It will read, and I'm going to move you around a little bit here. This is a lot tougher doing than with firearms. But it reads in 
RMS power and peak power. Now the only way it will read in peak power is, is you have to have power applied to it, i.e. plugged in to a 12 volt power source. Okay. So it's got an electronic circuit board in it that powers up when you apply power to it and it is supposed to read true peak power. Unlike the Dozy, which I understand, don't know if it's right or not, but that it reads in average peak power. Measuring power is a lot like measuring distance. You can measure it in inches, centimeters, feet, yards, meters, kilometers, miles. Well, measuring power is a lot the same way. You can measure it in RMS, average peak, average peak, PEP, peak envelope power, true peak power. You get my drift. So it really was bugging me. So I ponied up and I ordered this meter and I just received this meter you're looking at today. And uh, I hooked it up, first of all, downstairs, checked it on uh, a couple of radios I have in here. And it was reading a little bit higher than my dozy, but not astronomically higher. And I was like, man, you know, that was a bunch of BS. The radio that I purchased is upstairs. I have a, my main radio room down here, and I do have a radio upstairs in the living room. And I was sitting up there, and I said, you know, this thing is not going to read what they said. I said, but I have got to try it. So I take this meter upstairs, hook it up to the radio upstairs, that they claimed out of the box, 70 watts, true peak power, and lo and behold, son of a gun, that thing was reading 70 watts, true peak power. But the company claimed that they were getting 93 watts out of it, true peak power. But I can, I can see how they did that, is because whenever you first key it and start talking, the meter will kind of jump up and then it comes back and steadies out. Well, whenever it's going past and coming back, well, it's getting just a little bit above 90 watts. So here, my point is, is it just depends on your meter. And whenever you get into radio, if you get into radio, a very, you know, big concern should be how is your radio putting out its power? You know, you need to have a carrier or a dead key and you want to have swing, okay? Whenever you talk into the radio, you want to have forward swing. You don't want a dead key 2 watts, 3 watts, 4 watts, and swing to 5 watts or 6 watts, okay? Or you don't want a key 4 watts and you talk into it and it sits at 4 watts. That's horrible. The more swing you have, the better you're going to be heard and, and the better the radio is going to perform. So, you know, meters are a lot like guns, okay? A lot like guns. This one here is actually what they call a cross needle. Let me go on the dummy load here. Uh, I'm gonna go over there. Let's see. Yep, that's where I want to be. And I will show you. Now this meter has got two scales. A 300 watt and a 2000 watt. Now this meter is not going to I'm trying to find my uh, my squelch. Okay, this meter is not going to uh, show a low carrier. Okay, but you will see swing on the meter. Okay, you see the I key it. Let me put this on RMS, not peak. Whenever you're checking dead keys and stuff, you don't need it on peak. Okay. Now this also shows your standing wave ratio, which is right here. This is called a cross needle. Whenever you key, this needle will go up the higher your SWRs are. Now you can see that that needle is barely moving, so my SWRs are very low. Okay, they are very low on the dummy load. They're very low on my antennas. But this is what I want to show you. I want to show you swing. Audio. Audio. Now you see 
uh, first audio, the, the meter kind of jumps up and then it comes back and steadies out. Well, that's what I read is the steady out power, not what it stinking blings up to, okay? Now, I don't want to make this too terribly long. Too late, huh? Now, on this one, this does not require any power or anything, okay? It does not have a powered circuit board in it. You know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, people say that a powered meter is going to be more accurate and a better meter than an unpowered meter. Well, in a way, that kind of makes sense to me. But here again, I have not had any major issues at all with my dozy meters. Okay, you can see 20 watt scale audio. Now you saw that thing swing Hello. over to about 18 watts. Okay, the thing's dead key in about a little over a watt. You see what scale I'm on here? Not even. Audio. And the thing is swinging almost at 20. That is a phenomenal amount of swing in my book. It is. So this radio that I'm using right now is a very good sounding, very strong radio. Okay, that's real important. So you do want to have a quality meter to actually see how your system is operating. But one of the biggest things you want to do is ensure that your SWRs, I'll show you how it works on this, SWR set, let me turn up the power a little bit, okay mod, I need to put this on set, now I want to, now you see over here on the right there is an SWR calibration set point. Pretty close. Now that meter's moving because this microphone, when I talk into it, it's hearing me, so it's making the needle move. Now I'll put it on SWR, and you can see what it is right there. Okay. About a 1.2 right in there. Okay. 1.5 or lower is, is pretty much considered acceptable. You do want to have it as low as you possibly can. Some people claim that 2. 0.0 or lower is good, but I personally do not want to see anything over a 1.5. I really would prefer to see it 1.3 or lower. But uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you can do research on, you know, different meters and and uh, you know, go on YouTube. I mean, there are other meters out there that are, you know, very good. Uh, bird. Bird meters are kind of the quote-unquote industry standard for meters. You get into a bird peak reading meter and you're, and, and you're going to be looking at some serious money. You know, even a used, really good shape meter body is going to run you $350, $400. Then you have to buy slugs for it, depending on your, your frequency and your power rating. You know, and these slugs can run $80 to $130 a piece. So if you get a bird meter and you need a slug for 10 watts, 50 watts, 100 watts, 250, whatever, well, I mean, you can easily have seven, 800 bucks wrapped up in a good bird meter. Now, yeah, it isn't worth that to me. But I wanted to try the PAL Star PM2000A. You know, that dozy, that big dozy meter, I've only had it for like three, four weeks. So they're both practically brand new. But uh, anyway... That's pretty much it. Uh, meters are kind of like guns, so it gets confusing. People will argue about it, do some research. Um, I personally feel that Dozy is good. Uh, I've owned many of them. Palstar, I really can't speak on it. I just got it today. I mean, it seems to be fine now, but you know, time will tell on longevity. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll have another one coming up pretty soon. We'll see you.